Red Wiggler, any Iron Sheik stories? All right. <laughs> I was in WCW. And I hooked up with, with Sid Vicious, which I actually gave Sid the name. His real name is Sid Udi. Mm. And they wanted a name for him. I says, and I had been reading about the, what was that group in uh, Sex Pistols? In Sex Pistols. I was reading about them, and one of them was named Sid Vicious, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, call him Sid Vicious, because I had just been reading about that. And I gave, a, I, I gave something that maybe the guy won't give a crap. I didn't even think about that. So that's what we named him, Sid Vicious, and he liked it, and he kept it his whole career. Uh, so I'm writing with him. So, And then he come up and said, oh, yeah, uh, we, and we're making the loop. And the loop, we worked seven days a week at the time. And I was doing commentary in Atlanta with Tony Schiavone on, I think, Worldwide, the show. So I had to be in Atlanta every week to do the commentary. So, and I got with Sid because he had to do the same thing, except he worked, he'd wrestled. And so I got with him and we would leave Atlanta airport on Tuesday morning. And then we start out on the loop wherever we started. And he'd rent a car. And he told me about the first week, he said, oh, uh, the Sheik is getting in with us. And I went, okay, Sheik got in with us. And the Sheik, he was, see, I got along with everybody. Sheik was okay. So we got to Knoxville, and I went about 30 days with this. <clears throat> Finally, we got to Knoxville on a Saturday night, and the University of Tennessee had just played a football game. That's back when they kind of had a good team and they would sell out 105,000 people would descend on that stadium. So all the hotels were booked up. So we worked nice on uh, Knoxville. <clears throat> I mean, the, the game was the next day. We was there on Friday night. So the next day, I mean, we tried after the matches, we tried to go find a hotel booked, booked, booked. We finally found a hotel I call affectionately now the motel four it's actually not as good as a motel six because it didn't it didn't have a phone it only had uh, a black and white tv it was a, it was a flop that was the only place we could get a room and it was like a hundred dollars ordinarily they'd be 15 dollars, but since it was selling out that all the rooms were taken a hundred bucks so i'm in a room and i'm thinking god i hate this place we only had to stay in there about, I don't know, to seven o'clock the next morning, but I, it was about 11 o'clock at night. I didn't want to stay. And the sheik says, I, I know so vicious, so vicious. Let's go, go have a drink. And Sid said, well, what do you want to do? I said, and I wanted to actually get out of the room. So I go to the, out to the car and we were going to go to a bar. So we go to a bar and by this time it's like, 1 30 in the morning, two o'clock. Cause we drove around an hour looking for the room. So we find this place. It was an after hours club. I didn't know that. And it had a gravel driveway and a gravel parking lot. Always be leery of gravel parking lots <laughs> because something's up. So we pull in there and they had a guy parking the cars, something. And, uh, some girl was talking to this guy in a car and we can't get in and, and said, beep, he blew his horn kind of rudely. I might add. And the next thing we see coming out the window is the guy did this. Sheik solid. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Mark, he disrespected us. Sid said, what are you going to do? And now he put Sid on the spot. Sid walked up there and said, Hey man, what are you doing? I have you. And then, Sid popped him where well, the guy took off. Now all the bouncers know us. And the guy said, Hey, park right here, park right here up close to the door. So we parked there because they knew Sid knew me and they knew the, the iron sheet. We parked, go in there place is packed because you know, it's bring your own booze. So, so we, we brought something in there. I forgot what it was, but, but I wasn't drinking. Sid wasn't either. Only, only the Sheik was drinking. <clears throat> so Sheik, uh, uh, Sid takes off and was circling. 
And I see the sheik, he grabs this woman. She comes and she says, oh, you're the iron sheik. Oh, yes. And he pushes her up on the, on the bar. And he's, he's playing with her. And he got her, he got her nipples out. And he's kissing all over her nipples and all out in front of everybody. And some guy walks by and he says, oh, iron sheik. I'm a huge fan, Iron Sheik, and I talk to you. And he interrupted the Iron Sheik, what he was doing. And Sheik walked out of there, and he open hand slapped this guy. He looked like Chernobyl. He was going, <laughs> wong, wong. And there was a cop standing there, and he said, did you see this? Did you see that? And the cop saw it. Cop walked away. So finally, the guy took off. And finally, Sid come around and the guy come up and he said, Dutch, you better get chic and uh, sit out here. The guy, he's, he's gone to get his friends. And he says, you know, they're, they're not the most nicest people in the world. I said, well, let's go. So we walked outside and guess what we found? The whole back windshield of, <laughs> of Sid's rented town car shattered. Because the guy he punched going in, come back, and he busted the windshield and told the told the bouncer, tell him that's for me. He'll know what it's for. And the guy <laughs> left. So I left, got in the front seat. Sid got in the front seat. There's glass shards all over the place. Of course, the glass shards are all in the back seat where Sid, I mean, an iron chicken. And, and he took the girl with him. And they sit back there and they go, ooh, 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 and, and we went home. <laughs> I said, that is the last time I make the loop with the sheik. That's, <laughs> that was enough for me. So, And we stayed on the road. That was 30 days in. I stayed on the road that time 62 or 64 straight days before I went home. There's, there's one thing I've got to ask. Did Sid get the insurance? I don't know. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't get the insurance anyway because it's a rental car. They would just fix the car. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. Little charge so are, like you saying that, are you saying that Sid in, was involved with some shady dealings? <laughs> I always heard that about him. But he was, a, he was a softball player, you know. He loved softball. Mm-hmm. So the son, he hated wrestling in the summer because it took him away from his softball. So, but Sid is, oh, Sid Sid, I always got along with him. Good guy. But you know, when he broke his leg. Yes. He got several, several million dollars out of that. Really? Remember that? Yeah. Do you well, know what it was? C- it, he was coming off the top rope and someone, and he ended up landing on one leg doing an axe handle, didn't he? Whatever he was doing, he told him he didn't want to do it. Yeah. According to him, and I believe that. And he and it bent like almost perpendicular to the leg. It was bad. I can't even watch it. No, I can't. And I don't know how I don't know how they pieced him back together. So whatever he sued for, I think he got I've heard stories, I think he got five million. That's a lot of money. It's crazy. And that was think. back in, that was back in, what year was it? In the it's 90s, two, right? Uh, 2001 that happened. I think it was in January. And, okay. Where was, was he with WCW? Yes. Yes. It was on, it was live on pay-per-view as well, I believe. But, okay. From WCW, did he go to WWF? Or mm. he was WWF first? No, he was WWF. Well, hang on. I mean, the timeline is something like WCW, WWF, WCW, WWF, WCW, and then the leg thing happens. Oh, okay. 